This podcast is a uniting heart and soul production and was recorded on land that was stolen nearly 250 years ago. This particular episode was recorded on the land occupied by the Baramadigal people, a clan of the Darug people. We pay our respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples, and we acknowledge that sovereignty over these lands was never ceded. It always was, and always will be, Aboriginal land. At Filthy Hope, we humbly contribute to the ancient and ongoing traditions of storytelling when we share stories on this podcast. Hey, just a heads up, this episode does contain some four-letter words, so if you find that offensive, this might be an episode to miss. Vanessa, you need to be very careful... Mm. When talking about God in that way, mm. who do you think you are that you hear the voice of God? Mm. And I said to him, who the fuck do you think you are that you don't? Mm. And you're a minister in the United Church and you don't hear God? Mm. Welcome back to another episode of Filthy Hope. As always, I'm your host, Jonty. Um, I'm joined by my co-host, Ness. Hello, friends. And returning to the show, <gasps> Steve Malkinson. I don't think I've ever called you that in my life. Malk. Yeah. Clap, clap. <laughs> and if you say that, no one will know who I am. Exactly. Hello, yeah. I'm Malk. Yeah, Malk. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. Hello. Hello, Ness. Hello, lovely. Clap track. Sure. Oh, yeah, clap track. Yeah. Yeah. All big music. For, for, for maybe it's your first time listening, Ness's favourite thing to do in this show is assign me more post-production work. <laughs> I enjoy the, the on-air meetings. <laughs> yeah. We'll just get together and have staff meetings while we've got a guest sitting here yeah, waiting. it's great. But even the post-production meeting sets, so we will do this after the fact. Yeah. yeah. And it's in the podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, sometimes my favourite thing to do, and if you go back through old episodes, you might be able to find this, is you will mimic what you want me to do in post-production and instead of me adding that in, I will take your version and add some reverb and stuff and make it up nice. So instead of oh, I know clouds, you do that. Uh, crowds cheering, you've just got nests cheering. I so, know, yeah. like this. Say mulk. Mulk. <laughs> the crowd goes wild. Exactly. Thank exactly. You. So uh, we had you on the show last year. I think that was just the two of us as well. hundred so years ago, yeah, via yeah, yeah. COVID, obviously. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So super pumped to have you back on the show. Um, we had a like an hour and a half conversation last time, so I'm really excited to see where this goes. Um, before we do that, we're going to do Vent Central. Mm. Play the music, Jonty. <laughs> So again, if it's your first time, Vent Central is where one of us gets an opportunity to uh, vent, rant and rave about something that's giving them the shits. Um, might toss over to you, Malk. Sure. What's giving you the shits at the moment? <sighs> it, look, it's, it, it sounds weird, but go with me on this. Sure. I love television. I love particularly scripted drama television. And the, the drama that at the moment is without peer for mine is Succession. And it's nearly over. Mm. Mm. So my vent is that it's nearly over. Mm. At time of recording, we've seen the second last ever episode of Succession. It was, before I go there, have you seen it at all, Ness? Yes, I have. Are you up to date? Not up to date. Okay, Jonty, have you seen it? I have not watched an episode. (gasps) 
ever. My no, my partner's like deep Obsessed. into it. Yeah, Great. yeah. So when when it finishes, okay, my plan is to watch all of it. Then I will do this as spoiler free as I can. A big thing happened earlier in the season, mm-hmm. and that big thing had its payoff this week Whoa. in the second last episode. Mm. Now, for those who are watching. In this final season of Succession, every episode is one whole day in the life of the Roy family and they are contiguous. So it's like episode one was day one, episode two was day two, the very next day. Mm. So it's been this phenomenal rollout of like an emotional roller coaster of Mm. all sorts of things. Uh, And and it was gobsmacking. Like there's nothing that fills this void. Like House of the Dragon I've enjoyed, but it is not Succession. Um, We do some good Aussie scripted drama, nothing has been close to succession. Mm. And like prior to this, I obsessed deeply over Breaking Bad and rewatch it regularly because it is that good. And Better Call Saul came out. I obsessed over it in the same way. It's now finished. Succession is about to finish. What shits me is what am I going to watch next? (laughs) Yellowstone, brother. Oh, See, I've watched the first five episodes when it's not for me. Oh, what? Yeah, I know. Is it the cowboy chap thing? I think so. Yeah, I'm not right. big on the cowboys and the horses unless they're digital and a little um, like elf called Link is riding one of them. <laughs> okay. It's pretty good spicy drama, mm-hmm. familial dysfunction like succession. Yes. So I would have thought you would have liked it. It's just I see it as like Sons of Anarchy but with horses. Sure. It's got that vibe. Did you do Sons? Uh, yeah, I did and enjoyed that a lot. Oh, uh, yeah. You could just re-watch that. I could. I look at. I think I'm almost due for a Breaking Patrick watch. So I think okay. that just might have to fill that void in the short term. Yeah. Have you, look. My favourite is Bridgerton. Have you gone there? Uh, look, I did, and I'm not. Yeah. Neither's John T. No. no. Yeah. Uh, but again, it's I haven't seen us. an episode, so I, I can't speak critically on it because I haven't seen it. But I know that it's not for. But me. the good news is, John, it is not for men. Yeah. And that's like why I haven't not watched for it. Me. Well, it's not for straight men. Anyone else can, and ladies love Bridget and get involved in it, but yeah. generally speaking, it's not for it's straight, just not for me. Straight yeah. dudes, yeah. Okay, yeah. I, I'm going to jump onto this Van Central as well. And part of the issue with mm. all of a sudden, what are you going to watch? Is yeah, there's a writer's strike happening yes. at the moment, which I'm loving sick because what's the best thing to do is give a whole bunch of writers the opportunity to write placards. <laughs> That's it's so great. <laughs> but the the thing that shits me about it isn't that all the writers are striking because I'm a writer and I kind of go yeah get paid is the people that I hear talking critically of writers because they are striking oh they've got it so what are they striking over it's like uh, shut up dude (laughs) yeah join a union (laughs) in in my spare time I I talk and write about television particularly yeah and and the writer strike has has captured a bit of my attention for exactly that reason Mm. that at the core of it it is about the fact that the the nature of the contracts that writers live under have not changed significantly and in the time that the last lot were really written streaming has taken such a rise yeah. that they're seeing no benefit, mm. no ongoing sort of payment out of all of that. The actors have already stri- had a strike and now see some mm. benefit from that. But writers who make, understandably, their living and the most mm. money out of residuals and replays and mm. reruns, mm. when it lands on streaming, they need to have capacity to earn income mm. from that method. Yeah. Mm. So it's, yeah. Can crazy. I tell you, I was on um, a show called Water Rats. Yes. Which was on, I think, Channel 9. As in you were legitimately on it as an actor. Yeah. Great. And that show keeps being on Channel mm-hmm. 9 over and over and over again. And I don't get paid. And people get to enjoy my acting on that mm. show. <laughs> In those moments. Uh, look, it's not fair. No, it's not fair. And that's uh, both to you and to the rest of the population. Because mm. Water Rats was fine in its time, but mm. I don't know how well it holds up now. Well, I still should be being paid. <laughs> look, it depends on the nature of your contract, right? Yeah, you should have seen my boobs. They were great then. Mate, same. <laughs> <laughs> I think I may not have been born of that. What, when was that? When First run. When 95. Yeah, yeah. 95. I, I, was, I wasn't even a mm. thought. Great so. theme, great opening theme, mm. great visuals. Like mm. they poured the energy in to make mm. Sydney Harbour look super sexy. Mm. Catherine McClements yeah, was the female lead mm. and she smashed it. Yeah, she was hot too. Yeah, yeah. Back I keep day. going to say Gary Sweet was in it, but he was nope. in Police Rescue. Mm-hmm. Who was the male lead for uh, Colin Friels? Colin. Please, mm. if you Same don't mind. Colin. Just pre his Silver Fox era. Yeah, right. <laughs> in 95. <laughs> So, like, paint the picture. What was your role? School Uh, teacher. Genuinely curious. School teacher. Ferry blows up. Kids die. Mm. Rescue bodies from water. Did you plant the bomb? 
No. School teacher who crying, sobbing at the police station on yeah. Goat Island. Great. Mm. Powerful, mate. Wow. Mm. I'm going to go and watch it now. Like, Change people's lives. Mm. <laughs> just, just to find episodes that you're in because <laughs> I'm genuinely curious now. No, I think you've oversold it when you say episodes. Okay. <laughs> it was one episode. It was one episode. Gotcha. The first episode. Yeah, yeah. The best. Yeah, of course. Mm. The pilot's always the best, mm. isn't it? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, inevitably. <laughs> and hello to everybody under the age of, you know, 35 that is still listening. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Water rats. <laughs> That's right. I'll put a timestamp right on the... If you're on the edge of 35, just skip to this. Thing. <laughs> yeah, come down. Yeah. Um, great. There might be music playing now. Future Jonty, you can edit this later. We're going to have a chat now about the Holy Spirit. Mm. Um, I think I, you, I'm pretty sure, taught, like, you used the language with me that in the Uniting Church, we got the, God the Father and God the Son mm. under wraps. Mm. The Holy Spirit is the thing that we're not great at talking about, explaining, mm. theologizing. Mm. Um, so I thought this would be, at the time of recording, we're coming up to Pentecost, mm. would be a great opportunity to unpack that. So I guess underarm question to you, Ness, to start. What is the Holy Spirit? Well, historically, I'll do some brain stuff. Help me out, Malk. Please. Oh, if, if I can. <laughs> <laughs> the Holy Spirit was promised, well, an advocate was promised by Jesus during his time on earth. He was going to send something far greater than himself. And for the apostles not to panic or lose their shit because there mm. was going to be something far greater than him mm. when he ascended. Mm -hmm. They didn't know what it was. They Many of them didn't um, have the faith to know. Jesus spoke in parables and a bit of riddle and so how were they to know? Mm. And then seven weeks after Easter, and we've just discussed that, which was – the Maundy, so it would have yes. been it would have been um, the day after Passover, Passover, so fifty days, yeah, yeah, fifty days after Passover, as in Penti fifty, yep. was a festival, and at this festival they gathered, and it is recorded in Acts two. One to twenty-two, I believe. Mm. Did you like that? Well done, frankly. I would just would have said somewhere in the Bible. Yeah, I normally <laughs> do, Malk. I normally yeah. do. The new bit. Yeah, <laughs> in Acts, written by Luke, mm. so it's sort of Luke's second book. Yeah. He talks about this event that happened where the Holy Spirit came, and he described tongues of fire. Mm. What tongues of fire? Like, what is that? And all these people started to speak in other languages that they could all understand. Yeah. It was just absolutely extraordinary. And it must have been such a pivotal moment because after that event, they scattered and the church was born. They mm. believed this was like the church's birthday. That's what we call it church's birthday at Pentecost. Which is a great motif, isn't it? Because I appreciate the whole birthday thing scenario mm. and then here are human candles yeah. in a room right. with yeah. tongues of fire above their head. You try and blow out Peter and he punches you in the face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not, yeah. to not to mention the frosting goes everywhere. Mm, that's right. <laughs> Just extraordinary. So that is the biblical description in the Bible according to Vanessa. Yep. <laughs> Simple Coming stuff. to bookstores near you. Yeah, yeah. that's right. But I suppose the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit, my encounters with the Holy Spirit mm. is the way that I can describe the Holy Spirit because I don't know tongues of fire. Mm. I haven't had that experience. But my experience is um, from the point that I gave my life to Christ and we became partners and did this beautiful marriage together – and I got saved and 
it was an intensely Holy Spirit moment, which I know now was mm. that. Mm. It's sort of when heaven and earth collided. That's how I describe it. So it was full of feelings, mm. big feeling moment. And I believe it's when the Holy Spirit entered into me, probably how it was like in Pentecost, and mm. the Spirit entered the apostles. And I was overcome with a sense of knowing that God had entered into me mm -hmm. in that moment. Sure. And that things were going to be changed and different from that very moment. And it was an intense set of feelings that was all encompassing my entire physiology and my psychology and my emotions. And I describe it like a firecracker being shoved up my ass. Mm. That's how I describe it. And like a like a firecracker went off mm. and I was propelled out of my seat and I was just filled and I was such a sceptic mulk. Sure. I was not into God. And I had this whammy Damascus Road kind of moment that was just levelling. We you change your name from Vanessa to Ness. <laughs> yeah. yeah. From your, your Jewish to your Greek name. Yeah. That's right. Badass in front of it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, that's how I describe it. And I describe the, the Holy Spirit as equipping me with what I describe as a knowing. So mm -hmm. I, I audibly hear the voice of God. Yep. And I... When God wants me to know something beyond a shadow of the doubt, I will hear his voice in a very large way. And I remember somebody, when I was um, going through ministry selection, mm. saying to me... I can only imagine where this is going. Yep, sorry. <laughs> saying to me, one of the, you know, the princes of the Uniting Church, mm. saying to me, Vanessa, you need <laughs> to be very careful... Mm. When talking about God in that way, mm. who do you think you are that you hear <laughs> the voice of God? Mm. And I said to him, who the fuck do you think you are <clears throat> that you don't? Mm. And you're a minister in the United Church and you don't hear God? Mm. Isn't the Bible full of stories of people hearing the voice of God? Out of a donkey. <laughs> Literally, mm. you know, so a bush, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, plant, plant. That's right, extraordinary. So, God just speaks to me through the Spirit and in through audible, mm. and also in sign what I describe as signs and wonders. Yeah, mm -hmm. and this is before I actually knew a thing about theology. Mm -hmm. Way before I knew anything, I just thought I was a bit cray cray. Sure. And a bit odd. Yes. Because I was just describing how God was um, impacting my life and how I knew it was God. And I was in the Penty Church at yeah. Hillsong, so people were just going, yeah, of course, yeah, that's, that's how right. It works. That's how it is. Yeah. yeah, of course, of course, that's right. So I didn't feel any different or odd in any shape, way or form. And then when I came over to the Uniting Church, it was almost like, I initially felt that they tried to knock that out of me. Mm. And I remember being in my formation years and people saying, oh, here she goes again, the <laughs> Jesus girl. Yeah. You know, the Jesus girl's going to talk about Jesus. If that's the worst they called you, you've got to wait clean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I'm sure they called me other things, bro. Sure. But Jesus girl is one that you want to lean into rather than step away from. Well, right? I was yeah. happy to lean yeah. into that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'll be Jesus girl. Yeah, <laughs> I just felt that God was calling me into the Uniting Church, and I firmly believed and still do that it has something pivotal to do with the Holy Spirit. Mm, yeah, and maybe it's through education, maybe it's just through. Um, preaching and teaching yep. or just who I am and how God made me. I don't know, Malk. I haven't worked that piece out yet. Mm. But I know that I'm called to just be authentically true to how God 
speaks and occurs oh, preach. in and through me. Yeah, come on. Yeah. So I see I see the spirit in all sorts of different ways. So I've just been on a um, selection panel mm-hmm. um, in the church and God spoke to me in the middle of that meeting. And I'm able to, through three words, it's never like, oh, by the way, Ness, can we have a chat afterwards? Yeah, yeah, Actually, right. can you give mm-hmm. me a call? Call me yeah. on Jesus 1-300 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. after this meeting. It's, it's usually just a couple of words that don't make sense at the time yeah. or what I call a smack in the back, mm-hmm. like a prompting and a knowing. Yeah. And then I, I, and what I do know now is that I need to speak it yeah. and not hold it back because I used to be so scared of judgment and what people would think and say that I used to not say anything at all. Yeah, wow. So now I just say what God said and I let it land. Yep. And it's often not for me to um, interpret. Mm-hmm. I'm just given a collection of words or motifs, or even a vision, yes. and I just say it, yep. plonk it out there, and the other smart bastards can work it out. <laughs> Ness, first of all, thank you. That's, That's incredible. Just yeah. a great insight into a, a little bit of who you are and how you find yourself in ministry. Mm. And, and hearing you articulate so clearly how your engagement and relationship with God continues to grow and, and uh, you know, encourage you mm. in who you are is phenomenal. So mm. I, re- I really appreciate you sharing that. Thanks, lovely. Um, I, no one ever says that. Well, it, I'm trying to practice being a good guy. Um, <laughs> I mean it sincerely. That sounds so horrible now. <laughs> God. Play some music now, John. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> pop, pop me to work. Quick gear change. Yeah. Uh, it, it, I, I, have, I have so many questions, not of you, mm. though I, I do want to hear more of, of you know, some of the reality of that. I, I, I guess the questions are wonderings around... I mean, not just how our movement addresses and deals with and acknowledges the work of God as spirit within Mm. who we are, Mm. how we teach it, Mm. how we engage in it and relate to it. Also, how then broader Christendom in the modern era engage in that. And that's a much bigger Mm. conversation because we start to look at, you know, our Pentecostal friends particularly and the way they understand the movement of the spirit versus our more conservative friends and the way they would look at the movement of the spirit both valid, just mm. real different manifestations, mm. if I can use that word yeah. in, in the context. Yeah, yeah. And then historically, yeah. you know, how has the Spirit of God moved upon the church, upon the world, mm. in all of those sorts of things? Mm. And and just drawing out some of the stuff that, that you were talking about, I was particularly, like I reflected in your con- in, in you telling us just this idea of that, that for you, the way that the Spirit engages with you, is, is there's a physicality to it mm. in that you the way you hear stuff and and a, a feeling like mm. a that you slap in the back stuff mm. and for some people legitimately mm. they have that regularly mm. they have it once in their life or they mm. never have it at all mm. they still have deep relationship with God just mm-hmm. it's a different stage scenario and like uh, I reflect even then into you know the text that we hold as scripture, this it took me a long time. Now I'm nearly fifty, right? I'm an old man. It took me a long time theologically to understand, and I don't think I've even got a good grasp on it now. But the notion of the Trinity, because a lazy, cursory reading of Scripture, there's no explicit w- conversation about this Trinity context or the word Trinity doesn't pop up. No. I have since had some good reading and some good teaching, and I start to see here's how God engages, and this is what it means, and those sorts of things. I've, I've also had some people of various theological persuasions try and tell me, well, the Holy Spirit only really turns up in, New, in the New Testament. That's in bullshit. In Acts 2. Spot on, it's bullshit. Genesis, right? mate. <laughs> mate. Hovering Genesis. on the water, brother. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, the manifestation of God in the bush, as we spoke about when in the conversation with Moses. Mm. Yeah. The idea that um, the, the Spirit, an angel of the Lord, mm. was engaged deeply in the Passover context that freed the, the Jewish people in the first mm. instance. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. The notion of how um, Saul and David and their interactions, God was deeply at work in those things. Mm. Jonah, mm. like all of those, the the, uh, the whole Elijah and Elisha story, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, and I appreciate they're their slave names, but those guys mm. and everything that went on about mm. that. Mm. Daniel in the den. Mm. Um, all of... God is at work in the midst of all of this. The thing that always struck me, because I remember being asked this as a young adult, mm. 
I was I was being interviewed to actually be a part of working in a church for a year in a sacrificial order called the Order of St. Stephen. And somebody asked me, so have you been baptized in the spirit? Mm. And I I I knew what they meant mm. and I hadn't had that, you know, kind of outpouring, shaking kind of that kind of moment, but I knew deeply that God was at work in my life. So I was able to say, well, yes, and this is what it looks like for me. Mm. But I couldn't articulate it better than that. And it took an, an, an element of time, I think it was even in that year, some conversation with the minister that I was working with to help get the notion and the idea and understanding that Jesus has got incarnate, is is at work doing his thing, you know, circa 30 AD-ish, CE-ish, and, and helping out all of the people in greater, you know, Judea, doing his stuff. And it's at the start of his ministry, this real critical thing happens. He submits to that which he knows he's being called to do, and that's go and get baptised by John, yeah. who had been saying there is one that, that is coming. Yeah. The, the declaration of intent, yeah. if we want to lay yeah. out like that. He gets dunked. Mm. It's awesome. We, you know, A lot of us have participated in that process ourselves. Fabulous. Mm. Mm. And then this real clear moment takes place that I think Matthew's gospel particularly articulates incredibly, that the Spirit of God descended on Jesus yeah. like a dove. Yeah. And it's in that moment mm. that is heard mm. God the Father audibly speaking. Yes. So... In one instance, we have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit in one place at one time. Mm. And it blew my tiny mind mm. to connect those dots and go, oh, you know, God is at work and God is at work in our baptism. So yeah. while I appreciate people that lean into this idea of I need to have a baptism of the Spirit mm. separate to my declaration of I love Jesus mm -hmm. water baptism, mm -hmm. God's actually actively engaged in that as well. Mm. Like they're... they're I understand the feeling moments mm. and the stuff that happens and the emergence of gifts often mm. that come out of a, mm. a baptism of the Spirit. Mm. That doesn't mean that doesn't, and in fact actually does, we maybe don't recognize it, take place mm. in our water baptism because God is intimately involved in that with us. Of course it happens there, yeah. 100%. But it took me so long to work yeah, that out. right. I yeah. remember my daughters being um, baptized and we're in the... Um, We'd moved from the Baptist church. We did time in Hillsong, yep. time in the Baptist church, and then we went over to Day Spring Church, another Penty church. Mm -hmm. And my little daughter, Aurora, she was six turning seven, and she wanted to be baptised. Sure. And she just said, I want to be baptised. And so she spoke to her leader in Sunday school, and, and John said, yep, we'll baptise you, Aurora. There's no... Um, you know, six week course on yeah, yeah. how to be baptized. Confirmation classes. No, yeah. and you've got to be a teenager yeah, yeah. before you actually know that God's calling you to baptism yeah. because that'd be a thing. You've got to make a decision, profess with your mouth. Yeah, and you've got to study it, of course. Mm. You'd have to study for six weeks to know that you've actually, to clarify that, that re you really did hear God. Large book, yeah. thump. Here's yeah. the catechism. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you're six. Mm. Yeah. And so they, a group of little kids, and young adults um, in the church got baptised on this day. And Great. Aurora was one of the littlest ones to be baptised. And I watched her. This is gonna, I'm going to cry because I often do cry. Mom, mm. Everything's going to be okay. But don't I do I, cry. Don't, don't panic. panic. I'm don't panic. It's all okay. Familiar viewer listener. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. And Aurora climbs up and they're singing and worshipping and it's just going nuts in the church. And little Slink comes up and she goes down into the water and she's holding the leader's hands and she goes back into the water. Now what they ask her the questions and she says yes and she goes back into the water and she's down a little bit too long for her mother's liking. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, go. She's fucking held her nose. <laughs> and the little one, she comes up. She comes up out of the water and I, I watched her. Now, when a a baby is born. Mm. A baby is born with like this, oh, like this goop over them. There's yep. like a, there's like a, a goop. Like a that's, film. Yeah, there's mm. like a film. Yeah. That's great, Jonty. That's right. Contact. Yeah, like that over them. Well, Slink came out of the water and she had uh, like a goop over her mm -hmm. that was like a slimy covering. And you know they talk about it as being... Um, reborn or born yes. again. Yeah. I actually, for the first time, I hadn't been through theology training at that stage, but got the understanding mm. of 
born again mm. because I watched this like this little kid. She was covered in the stuff and they held her there and they prayed over her and laid hands on her and I watched her in the presence of the Lord in this deep and palpable sense of the spirit just entering into her entire being in that moment and externally Mm. coating her Mm. in his love and rebirth. It was so powerful. Mm. I can't begin to tell you. Mm. And anyway, we're clicking away, taking Mm. photos. Good parents. Yeah. 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 And then get the photos back. Oh, yeah. And she's covered in the goop. You can see it. You can see it. It's unbelievable. Wow. And I just think, wow, that's the Holy Spirit turning yeah. up. That's another sign mm. of the Spirit. And you talked about um, Jesus' baptism and the Holy Spirit in terms of the dove. Mm. I wonder if the Holy Spirit turned up in the way of the goop mm. that day. And that or don't be the last one in that baptism line, <laughs> right? Because it got a bit messy towards the end. <laughs> no, there's like a – you can see this – um, clear film over her. A sheen. It's yeah, sheen. Yeah. Yeah. It, have you seen this before? Do you know what I'm talking about? No, but just, I, like, I, I, I can picture what I'm it. Saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just extraordinary. Mm. Wow. And her the peace that came over. Now, six-year-olds generally don't operate in a mode of peace. No. They're just like little psychopaths, right? Yep. Um, Where's the next bit of sugar? Speed. That's right. And she was in a state of calm that I've mm. never seen her or seen her since. <laughs> <laughs> She just absolutely was in wow. this space mm. and it was it was awe inspiring in wow. the in the true sense of those words. Mm. That's incredible. To see that. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's an example of mm. yeah. the spirit and seeing the mm. probably the acting out thereof yeah. in, in what I would call a tangible seeing of. And I don't know if it's um, psychologists would say, Are you just looking for that? Mm. Do you have a bias towards that? Potentially. Potentially. I would say yes, but what's the problem that we are looking for that? I mean, for people that are, you know, in relationship with Jesus and wanting to do their best to be more like Jesus, then wouldn't we then be looking for signs of God at work in our lives and in the lives of those around us? So while I acknowledge the question around bias that psychologists would ask, in this case, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that's actually a really good thing. Yeah, if you put the, if you do the pub test on it it, and it's a positive thing and you think Jesus would be in all of that, then mm. yes, it's A-OK, yeah. right? And I think, like, if, if, my understanding is that we, especially with, with my own experience, is that we can only experience the Spirit through our own lens. So, mm. of course, mm. it, that makes sense to me that mm. you would, whether it manifests physically or, mm. or otherwise, through that lens of things that you can recognise and understand. Mm. So, to me, that makes total sense. So, I have a question to mm. pick up off that Amazing experience, also, Ness. Thank you for yeah, sharing that. Incredible. And ama- what do you call your daughter? Slink. So that's her nickname. That is yeah, the best, man. Yeah. I love. I love you a good nickname. Slinkies? Yeah, 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 yeah. But I just love a good nickname because, <laughs> and not the ones that are like, oh, uh, you know. Well, my name's nickname's Malk because yeah. my last name is Malkinton. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's that's an easy one to work out. I love the one where it's like you know it, his name's. Frank, mm. but his actual name is John. How do you get to yeah, Frank? Yeah. Well, there's yeah. this and there's something. Eight steps. Like, yeah. all of that stuff is great. So I have a question, mm. particularly in relation to our movement, our glorious, you know, muddle that we are in the Uniting Church. Yeah. And I'd love to know what you guys think about this. Now, we come out of three very unique Protestant churches, uh, mm. traditions, yeah. to become us, Presbyterian, Congregational, and Methodist. And I particularly want to lean into our Methodist history because Mm. it in itself Mm. comes out of its glorious beginner, founder, explaining his experience of God in a tangible Holy Spirit moment Mm. as feeling strangely warmed. Mm. Mm. Cool. Super down with that. I've loved it ever since I heard it. Mm. Like a great way to be able to articulate sometimes Mm. how God will engage with us. Mm. Why then, if this is our heritage and history, mm. do we as the movement that lives in 2023, year of our Lord, mm. struggle to articulate, discuss, acknowledge, pay attention to, mm. pay any credence to? the? We do in pockets, but it's not like our movement is branded by mm. God the Spirit empowers us. We, we use all of the right words mm. in the basis of union. Yeah. 
yet the practical playing out of that sometimes looks really dry. Mm. Yeah. Why is that? How did we get to that? And then, by extension, mm. how do we get to a place where, Ness, you expressed some of your experience before in how the, the Spirit speaks to you and engages with you, mm. that that some people who have responded to you have been either negative or outright hostile. Yeah. How did we get to that point? Why are we at that point (coughs) when we are in the business of acknowledging God at work in the world and wanting to participate in God's mission? Why then would we reject or be cynical, dismissive of experiences of God or God speaking to or working through people? Why do we actively seem to, it's a big generalization. I appreciate Mm. actively seem to push back on that. I, I never had the firecracker experience. Mm. And I know lots and lots and lots of people, particularly my age, the people that I hang out with and spend time with, mm. that have never had that firecracker experience. I think only sure. the dumb ones do. Well, no. but uh, I'm not dismissing that idea, but, yeah. like, possibly. But I think... <laughs> I can't believe you just said that. <laughs> you asshole. I can't believe you just said that. <laughs> I'm enjoying how we just both danced around that. That was yeah, pretty great. threw me under the bus. Yeah. But, um, so, but, yeah, so... Like, but I, it's not uncommon, and m- by my observation, people my age in the Uniting Church haven't had that firecracker experience. And I'm I not mean, saying only the dumb ones have to have the firecracker experience. That's what I'm saying, John T. Did okay. you don't misinterpret that? No, no. Like, I, do we need to cut this? Did <laughs> no, you no. get me wrong? This is a this great callback because I think he knew what you meant, but I love that you brought it up again. Yeah, oh, I'm so glad you, you under- brought it up. <laughs> Did you understand? This is all staying. Yes, I understood. Oh, I thought I'd offended you. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. So sorry. But so it's not that we ha- say so we. I I have experienced the Holy Spirit, mm. and I'm actually at, at the time of recording going through a bit of a trying to debrief my own experience of the Spirit and what that means. I think I I, I have been guilty of exactly what you have pointed your finger on this dismissiveness or maybe skepticism of that's the word i was looking for skepticism yep. of mm. of that more outward experience of the spirit possibly because i have never experienced it and things external to my experience possibly at a subconscious level i find a little bit threatening sometimes because it's not my experience mm. of the spirit it's not my experience of Christ, it's not my experience of the God who I know is a part of my life. Mm. So therefore, what does that mean about my faith? Is it wrong? Mm. Have, I, have I been doing this wrong the whole time? Am I not getting – have I not got it? Shit. As opposed to what I think you've already put your finger on, people experience these things differently mm. based on where they are at that point in their lives and where they are in their faith journey. God meets us where we're at, John Deere. Thank For sure. Thank God, too. Right? Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah that's, um, that's right. Because I would, Jonty, you know my story. I was really rock bottom. And God yep. needed, I needed a firecracker moment, mate. He didn't have um, six months, 12 years of slow drip to mm. help me on my journey. Mm. It needed to be a firecracker. You've mm-hmm. been, you've been drip fed Jesus and the Spirit since conception, brother. And, and I, I, I had Mum and Dad were probably praying <laughs> as before. they had sex. Yeah. <laughs> That's no, an image. No, Thanks for that. And knowing no, the Cornfords, I'd agree. That's probably what happened. No, they would have been. Hey, Dad. And, yeah. hey Mum. And I'm telling you, how beautiful is that? That you conceived in love um, with God all around you and it's a holy huddle and it's just magnificent and look who's born. And oh, I just need to say, gosh. even though even though you haven't had a firecracker up your ass, mm. I can see that firecracker all over you every day I work with you, mate. Well, thank you. I That's, see yeah. you exude spirit. You 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 have the spirit in and through you and just by sheer nature of who you are, John T. Cornford. You don't have to do anything. Well, I'm going to dive in. So go. You can respond because I think that's amazing. Go. Oh, that's incredible. Thank you. It's the thing, yeah. mate. It is the thing. And, I, and I just, it just struck me as this conversation just between you two is happening then yeah. Yeah. that these are not conversations that we have. Within, That's right. Within the life of our movement, often, mm. where we see how uncomfortable I am as a result of this conversation because we don't have them. Well, and reflecting back to you that you know, young adults, young people your age, 
uh, are either cynical and skeptical or just haven't had the experience I, I will project into it and say because largely we don't talk about it yeah we don't engage in that conversation very much we certainly don't teach on it very much as opposed to say you know our Pentecostal brothers and sisters who uh, for all of their goods graces and, and foibles lean real heavily into the work of God and how God manifests within their life part of the language and and to the point sometimes where it's if you don't Mm. have this physical yeah. manifestation in this way, then you're not really baptised in yeah. the Spirit. See, that's not right either. No, I know. And I, mm. I don't want to um, kind of tar everyone with the mm. same brush. Mm. It, I am speaking in generalisations. Mm. Mm. God works through all of us in incredible ways, whether we recognise God at work in us or not, mm. um, which opens up another conversation about the mission of God. That's another podcast. Um, the The idea that we're both not talking about it mm. because we either feel ill-equipped or we are second-guessing the audible voice or the slap mm. on the back or the mm. deep, deep knowing, the mm. strange warming, we're, that we're questioning that, yep. then to me says that we're just unsure about how we fit into this. Mm. And mm. we, as opposed to, this is going to possibly sound like a big slide against ordained ministers, please it's <laughs> not, as opposed to our ordained fleet who mm. do a great job of let's talk theologically about a whole bunch of stuff and we can handle God the Father and we can handle God the Son. God the Holy Spirit becomes a difficult thing mm. because I can't flip to any part of those 66 books mm. and go, and this is exactly the way to know how God is at work in your life. Mm. There are lots of great pointers. We mm. can talk about the you know the evidence of the Spirit at work in our mm. life through things like the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians. Mm the rehashing of that in, is it Ephesians or Philippians? Whatever. Paul leans into that pretty good. Even Jesus talks about it, right? Mm. Straight up. I will be with you. This is what it's going to mm. look like. The foreboding stuff mm. in Luke that leads mm. into Acts. There's lots of signposts, but no, like, rules there's and regs. No, there's no, no, no stone regs. tablet. No, there's yeah. no stone tablet. There's no basis of union yeah. that tells us how <laughs> that tells us how the Holy Spirit is going to function in our life. Mm. So consequently we get caught in this mix mm. again generally and sometimes mm. where those that are preaching and teaching and talking about how God works when we get to the Holy Spirit bit it feels a little bit David Copperfield. We wow. don't really know yeah. how it works, but we like mm -hmm. it when we see it. And mm. occasionally mm. we'll think we've seen behind the curtain and know how, to mix in another metaphor, how the wizard is really doing it. Yeah. I've got to tell you this funny wizard story. Okay, yep. this is a crack up. So I'd just started in my ministry at Woolara AA, Great. which is now Uniting Heart and Soul. Yep. And so I'm the... Holy Spirit Jesus girl and I make it really obvious because that's I have I have in my preaching I've mm. usually usually got one mode I'm a bit boring sure. it leads to the cross and it leads to the spirit all the time <laughs> right it's always about Jesus and the spirit we merge under the same freeway and we get to the same we place get, <laughs> yeah. always yeah. always so it's a bit I'm a bit boring if anything um but I'll always we'll I just we'll just let that slide we'll <laughs> I don't know how to not talk about the spirit we're I've through got, the looking glass here people that's yeah, what's happening yeah, yeah. I just don't know. I have got a complete bias yep. in my hermeneutics towards the spirit. Great. And that's just how God has formed me and I won't apologise for that. It just is what is. Mm -hmm. So if you come along to church on Sunday, you, you'll get a dose of the... You know what you're going to get? Yeah, you'll get HS, confirm. not BS. Yeah. <laughs> As I say, that's my, that's my slogan. Yeah. Anyway, I was... So my, my ladies in the congregation were just getting used to... My style and my language, right, John T. Getting used to, yeah, yeah. getting used <laughs> yeah. to how I how I be. It's all relationship. Yeah, and I had to ask permission to spend some money mm. on some small tables that I wanted because I wanted everybody to sit around little tables in church. I didn't want to do rows. Yep. I wanted to make it groovy and put lollies on the tables and make it a bit more community. Yep. And so we could gather around as opposed to looking at me saying a. Holy Spirit mm. <laughs> message. They could look at each other and have conversations and get to know each other and be community. Anyway, so I buy. They say yes, yes, yes. Go and buy. How many do you need? I said six. I need six tables. Okay, yes, six tables. Great. I go and buy the six tables at Bunnings, mm. and then I go. Yes, yeah, six tables will do it. And then God says to me, actually. You need four more, and I go. Oh, but I've, I, I didn't got money for six. No, I I say to God, yeah, but I've just you just said six, <laughs> and so I've bought six, 
And he says, you need four more. Mm. And I go, oh, I'm not going to get four more because my church council are going to think I'm a psycho <laughs> if I say, you said mm. four more. Yeah, four more tables is said, why they'll think you're a psycho. No, yeah. because you said six. <laughs> what is it? Six or four, mm. yeah. right? And so I didn't say anything mm. that morning. Guess how many more I needed? Four more tables. Four more tables. Mm. So then mid-sermon, I had to say... Fess up. Yeah, Yeah, I fessed up, didn't I, John T? And I said, and by the way, God said. And I think they looked at me as if to say, she's mental. Mm. But look what's happened. She really did need four more tables. Yeah. And then it grew. I needed needed actually 12. So (laughs) so it was so interesting. But God speaks Mm. to me that way. Yeah. But having my community understand that that's how I'm wired has taken a couple of years for them to actually trust, to trust the spirit in me because they're watching it. And I just be brave enough and bold enough to just say it now. I just say it and God always delivers. And I like to think that that teaches them. Mm. We were in Bible study just last Wednesday and, and one of the beautiful women said, It's all well and good for you, Ness, because God speaks to you. But we all haven't had experiences like that. Mm -hmm. So they've got, many of them have real cerebral experiences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, But Mm -hmm. I believe that we can all ask for what we need Mm -hmm. and God will give us what we need. And he will meet us if we have a desire of our heart Mm -hmm. To be met in a specific way, God will meet us in a specific way. Yeah. And I have I have tried that so many times. And it might be because I'm thick. It might be I don't know why, but I will ask the Lord for I will say, Lord, it's usually exacerbation, and I'll say, that's not masturbation, but shit, it sounded alike, didn't it? I wasn't going to pull you up I'm on glad it, but we I went think, there. But I think it was bation. It's an unusual word, mm, isn't sure. it? And Rolls off of, the tongue and it, weird, ma- sure. it was a bit matchy-matchy. Mm. So it, um, it uh, exacerbation, is that a word? Exacerbating, yeah. yeah. To yeah. exacerbate, but is shun? Exasperation, yes. is that what you... No, oh, exacerbation I mean, is it. It's yeah. the, Are you yeah. sure? The noun context of Or would it be exacerbating? That's oh, a, I don't know. That's the verb. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I was having that feeling. Let's engage someone. You're that having does a, an exacerbation session. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jesus. Oh. Anyway, I was having a feeling I needed <laughs> to ask God to show me within a shadow of a doubt I needed an answer, mm. like ASAP, brother. You need to deliver because yep. I need to know like in 19 seconds. Sure. And um, I – begged and pleaded and you know the bible says you only need to ask once but i did pleadorama i did a good 45 minute pleadorama and then god exploded Mm. with the answer Mm. and it wasn't in the form of a word it was in the form of a sign and this is another thing god does for me or the spirit does for me and it's one of my original signs when i first it was the original sign that I asked God for and I made a deal with the Lord and I said, my counsellor said to me, what will it take, Vanessa, before you believe in God? And I think of the most random, outrageous thing that I could possibly think of. Four tables. <laughs> no. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Play on, sorry. A white, snowy white, mm-hmm. fluffy cat yes. with iridescent blue eyes. Okay. Not a blemish on it. Great. And I say that to her. Just, and you know what the image was? The dine ad on yes. TV for cat food. Sure. Because I'm a crazy, crazy cat girl. Wouldn't so, have picked it. Well, anyway, <laughs> you're a bit of an asshole. I am the worst. I am the worst. <laughs> Forgiven. Bless Preach. you, brother. Come on. One of us is <laughs> what I'm hearing. <laughs> <laughs> so I asked for this cat all those years ago. Yep. 25. I'm now 55 mm. into this position and I'm asking God for a sign. Mm. I haven't had oh anyway, God jumps out in the form of this white fluffy cat. I end up giving my life to Christ and it was linked to the white fluffy cat. Amazing. Holy Spirit moment. I can unpack that in another story. It's probably in an episode I think we did cover it, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um I say to the Lord on this night I need a I need a a clear message that I will know and only I will know and I need to know it now. And out 
jumps on no street on my way up to my home yep. in the night, like 9.30, quarter to 10 at night, a white, fluffy, bastard cat. With blue eyes. <laughs> well, I wasn't sure of the eyes because it was night. <laughs> right. But it stood on the side of the road and if it was a human, it would have had its hands on its hips <laughs> going. Right. So what about it? Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Mm. That kind of look. Bitch, please. Yeah, yeah, come on. Yeah, I'm here, baby. Look at me, look at me. And I howled. Just like it stopped it, mm. to get to look at. I had to look at it and it stopped and looked at me as if to go, I'm, yeah, yeah. sign, bitch. <laughs> I kid you not. And for, on the, and I knew that was the spirit. Yeah. I mm. knew in that moment. And then it affected me in a deeply knowing way that only I would be moved in that moment by that sign and wonder. Yeah. And on the, th- on the thread of that, I accepted a call mm. to my current placement. Amazing. White fluffy cat. Well, mate, I've got to tell you, if I see a white fluffy cat, I'm getting the hell out of Dodge. <laughs> just, I do not want to know it. I won't acknowledge it. We just won't even talk about it. That's the point where I get up, get in my car and just drive west. Yeah. <laughs> just don't hit it. Yeah. <laughs> Again, I think to reflect back on, on our, the, the conversation around the why don't we talk about it as much, mm. this, this tangible stuffness mm. is – Incredible mm. and challenging. Yeah, it's challenging. And and has the capacity mm. for people that, that have a more cerebral yeah. faith yeah. to very easily push them back. Not yeah. and I'm, please, I'm not saying that's your fault. That's just kind of talking through the how that stuff works. Because in the, in a cerebral context, well, if Ness is having that happen, why am I not having that happen? Right. Yeah. And and the other part of it about that builds in the skepticism, not just even within within our movement, but let's go into other denominations and then even into the broader society around when they look at church and go, well, mate, why do I want to get involved in that mess? Mm. What do you mean God's at work? Look at how shit the world is, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. There are so many examples in our not just recent history, but history stretching back Mm. of people claiming Mm. to have heard God Mm. or to be working in the name of God, mm. or God told them to insert thing here, mm. or whatever it is, mm. and actually the evidence suggests everything to the contrary. 100%. Whether it's they were actually told mm. and they've acted and then have mm. been distracted or changed their approach, mm. or they were doing it for their own benefit in the first instance, making it up mm. to get the attention mm. order to draw in. And, and it's always those moments where... Like the cynical amongst us go, yeah, I never thought that was real. Mm. I never thought that it was too good to be true or the whatever's whatever's. Mm. And and that stuff, when when your faith is stretched in, it is held, I know, as much as I feel and I, you know, embrace and engage, I think when you've got those three things working as three distinct parts of your faith, you can kind of bounce through and bump through a lot of stuff, acknowledge that this is how Ness hears God and works, mm. this is how I, you know, mm. God speaks to me. We're all mm. getting on with the business of God. Amazing. Yeah. When one of those things holds the majority of your experience or understanding of how I engage in mm. my faith, mm. then I think that's when we start to get into some dangerous territory mm. where one one way of expressing our faith or knowing and understanding our faith mm. is the too much way that we do it. Mm. If we if we only know, mm. and that's our majority way of doing it, mm. I'm not going to say we live in God because we can't do that. I, I think what we do is is we exercise or we, we stretch ourselves away from what God is wanting to do with us and drawing us towards because mm. in our noggins, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. At the same time, if it is all about our feelings mm. and not enough about up here, then we will legitimately fall mm. for a feeling or a thought that I think was God. And right. so now I'm going to Nicaragua to go and mm. preach the gospel. And mm. I turn up there with no planning and no support mm. and wonder why things turn sour real quick. Mm. Like, you know what I mean? Like there, that's an extreme mm. example, but And again, for me, it just leans straight back into we don't talk about it enough. We don't. We're not willing to be. Oh, can I say vulnerable? 
Yeah, that's a great way of describing it. And you've got to be brave to say it. And I wasn't always oh, yeah. brave enough to actually say it. And it was at college I wasn't very brave about it because I felt like there was such pushback to the Jesus girl. Mm. Here she goes again with the Holy Spirit mm. talk. I mean, for heaven's sake, could you just shut the fuck up? Yeah. You know, so I did shut the fuck up mm. and I kept it very much to myself. And even at MLC school, it wasn't seen to be mainstream the way we do things until it became a case of, if I didn't, it didn't end well. Yep. So I needed to say what I need to say. And um, I just did it gently, gently yep. and grew my own confidence in it. Now, I've kind of got to a point now where I've just gone, oh, I just, it's not authentic for me not to operate in this way. Sure. So, and God operates in different ways for all of us. And it's about um, appreciating how God has shaped us all. We're all different, yep. right? We're all incredibly different. And why on earth would the Holy Spirit um, be the same for you, Mulk, as it is for Jonty, as it is for me? Yep. It's all very different. And we just need to listen to that and love that, that it is special and unique. Can, mm. I, can I be vulnerable with you guys? <laughs> and, you know, the literally tens of people listening and watching. <laughs> um, I, I had a recent experience that I'm still processing that I, I honestly cannot put down to anything else but this was God actively physically engaging with me. Mm. And that is uncommon for, for me. And it was out of the stupidest thing. I was in the most blessed of Uniting Church institutions, a meeting. <laughs> and it was, of all things, a meeting about church planning. And it was sometimes when I mean, church meetings can be dry at the best of times. Come and sit in a church planning meeting. Goodness. And, and not even about planning a church plant, talking about us encouraging the church to do church planning. It's meant planning. to be life-giving, it is, look, these meetings. Amen, sister. And <laughs> um, sometimes it is. And I'm sure for a lot of the participants it was. Mm. <laughs> for whatever reason, in, in the context of this meeting, we seem to hit on something that just deeply resonated in me. And I felt strangely warmed. In and of itself, I'm happy to just say, and look, maybe God was prompting me and you know mm. challenging me cool and I, I could have happily just left it at that mm. added a little bit of something to the meeting sort of spawned an idea in me it's still fermenting and and you know needs some wiser heads to engage in that conversation with me about what that could look like and, and those sorts of things after the meeting so the meeting is done and I'm still thinking about this idea and what it could look mm. like and what it you know just it's still and and I, I still I will catch myself just pondering how do we make this work? What's the implications? How do we develop this as an idea that then actually makes a difference in our little patch of the kingdom of God? And it would have been probably 15 or 20 minutes after the meeting. And I just physically shook. Wow. I didn't, like I, I didn't have a cold. It wasn't cold in the place that I was. Were you hungry? No. Well, I'm always hungry, but that's my lot. But not in that, not in that way. Um, there was no, I, I can't put it down to any kind of psychosomatic or physical reason. Mm. I just felt my body physically shaking. Wow. And I, <laughs> I didn't audibly hear the voice of God. I didn't have something to say. And so the reason is, yeah. but just that, just that acknowledgement that for me, the only thing that I can piece together in that is that what we were talking about mm. and... I'll even stretch into this idea, wow. this this gift from God that it is, that needs refining, is responsible for, and this was like the full stop exclamation point in Terabang at the end of it, to make sure that I paid attention, mm. to make sure that I knew that you cannot let this slide. Because, I, look, I love talking, right? I will have conversations and let's have ideas and think up big questions and do forever. If mm. that's the rest of my life, I'm a happy man. I love doing things, mm. particularly when they connect into the stuff that just fires me up and particularly where I feel that this is where the Spirit of God is wanting me to engage. <coughs> and, and, yeah, just, just this physical rounding out of this conversation. It was nothing more than that. Mm. So it's a burning bush moment, brother. I, look, I'm looking for the tablets now. I'm wondering which yeah. part of my house is going to get <laughs> yeah, yeah. singed. Um, <coughs> The short answer is yes. Yeah. I, I haven't, as I said, I'm, I'm continuing to think about, I haven't been able to process it further than that. 
Mm. Is it, it etched into your mind? As in the, the idea or the feeling? Mm, oh, totally. the idea is sitting there. In fact, mm. it, straight away after the meeting, I fired off an email <coughs> to a couple of people that need to be both involved in the conversation but also that I want to get to help me refine the idea. Mm. What does it look like? How do we shape mm. it? And I think there's some accountability in that that helps make sure that, you know, we don't let it die and that it doesn't, you know, fall off a cliff or stay on the tree and rot. I, ju I just... The challenge for me, and this is this will be a, a, a filthy hope exclusive, <laughs> is that I, because of the nature of what the idea is, I don't know if the reinforcement or the delivery of the idea is there. God then saying, "So that's it, Mog. You need to go to Nineveh," or that's a great idea, Mog. Here's how you facilitate this mm. so that a whole bunch of people can engage in the full life and ministry of what. God has planned for them because both will work fine right? Like I'm, <laughs> and I'm happy to be the servant that facilitates as much as I'm the person to do it. I, I continue to fight in part the notion of shepherding mm. um, and that is a much longer podcast, different podcast story that sits in my story in my life in part because <coughs> God doesn't need another old white man that becomes a minister at 55, right? Like, I don't, I don't need to do that. It doesn't need to be a thing. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, don't. Yeah. And, and I can... In the <laughs> do the angels. <laughs> and in the glory of our movement, I can also do that as a lay person as much as I can do that as an ordained person. Mm. Not, so, if, right. not unless God's calling you, though, the, and you're sure. going no to it. Sure. Then that would be disobedient, which and is, that would be a problem. Which is why we need and to have a whole to, yeah. other conversation about that's that. Right. That's wow. a separate podcast episode. Um, but yeah, so this this notion of it, it can only put it down to an inspired conversation. God was at work in that conversation within the meeting 100%. that drew out that idea and made it happen, and that this physical response was for me an underlining and reminder to say this: do not forget this <coughs> act. Yeah. Put it into action. Yeah, yeah. Well, in part, that was that email. I need to mm. fire it off mm. to these people because mm. that the next step is as much idiot checking as it is how do we develop the idea, mm. what are the next steps, mm. what do we do to make those things happen. It's amazing. Mm. Oh, it's so cool. Because I, I said at the beginning of this episode, I've had a, <coughs> I'm in a similar spot. Mm. I, didn't, I didn't hear words. I've talked to you about this already. It was more like, an, like you know, when you're, you get a shitty alert screen on your laptop that you got a problem. Like the yeah. word, yeah, it was more <laughs> suddenly an external thought was bam, right? In the, and same thing. Yep. It just has not left my brain. Going back to what we were talking about before is I felt not scared, but like, do I tell anyone? Mm. Because if I tell anyone, they're going to think, well, Jonty thinks he's suddenly hearing from the Holy Spirit. What the like? I've told one other person that story that I just told all of us and everyone listening, and and there are some anxieties in me sharing that because of what everyone a what everyone else might yeah, think, but also the accountability now of I've said it out loud, mm. and because the one person that I told can tell no one. Yeah, thanks supervision. Um, <laughs> just do a diary entry. Yeah, I don't journal, but that's a separate podcast as well. Yeah, but like Sorry. That, that, but, but that's a symptom yeah. of what we're talking about. Like, oh. someone like I was thinking earlier of this image of like uh, when you slowly boil a frog. Yeah, it doesn't realize that it's getting boiled until it, you know. Uh, as someone who has been in Jesus Land my whole life, and I've come and gone and sure. gone, gone through as everyone does, all of a sudden I have this external thing mm. come in that I haven't experienced, and I'm like. Is this real or is this like because I'm I've been not conditioned, but just by fact of this is my experience of God and Christianity and expressions of worship and how we talk about that in our groups yep. has been pretty the same the whole time. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, how do you talk about something that is completely external to that without feeling like people are going to think different of you? People are going to think you're crazy. Yep. People are going to think, is he making that up? Does he yeah. does he have a goal that he wants in mind? And all of a sudden he's going, well, God told me. So like all of those things, the right? Skeptical, cynical responses. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think you hit the nail on the head earlier is we've just got to start talking about it. Mm. Um, Being vulnerable to this, talk about it. This is the longest conversation I've had bar none about the Holy Spirit in my entire life. Mm. Like that, at just thinking about that now, that is 
crazy mm. that this is the only meaningful conversation about it that I've ever had. And I, I've been a Christian my whole life. So and, like, yeah. well, and that's reflective of, as I said, without bagging our, our glorious movement, the, 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 the idea that within at least the Uniting Church, we don't do good around our theology of the Spirit mm. and its mm. function and how God works through the Spirit mm. in us and in the world around. I think we're good with God at work in the world around mm. us. Mm. We get iffy when it's God at work in us. Mm. Yeah. Because all of a sudden you can't you just have to trust that I'm saying that God I had this experience of God. Mm. Mm. Whereas if it's we both see God at work in the world and something happening over there, mm. we've got there's there's like another party that can confirm the issue or can confirm the action when it happens often in a Holy Spirit context where it's just, I know this. Mm. God it's has given me this word. Subjective. I have to say this yeah. thing. We trust Ness that Ness is, has worked through all of that shit herself mm. to not question it mm. and to trust God that, yes, this mm. is God. Mm. And because Ness has jumped over those hurdles and we love Ness, we're willing to trust and love God working through mm. Ness to be able to say, Ness, we trust God. What you say is, mm. that's the thing. Mm. We'll go with that as that that's God speaking through you to all of us. It'd be pretty fucked if I said stuff that I said, if I represented God in a way that wasn't God. Mm. I mean, the Bible's really clear about Oof. people in leadership that, that do I mean, the dodgy. We were just It'd be in pretty l- scary, right? Dropping La- dead. Yeah. Last night in my Bible study, we were talking about uh, Luke 17, where he, Jesus is talking to his disciples with all the mm. religious leaders listening in. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, for those of you who intentionally, um, the NIV language is, um, cause one of these little ones to stumble, Stuff. it would mm. be better to be thrown into the ocean with a millstone around your neck. Mm. I want to play the music. That's one of my favourite. <laughs> but like, venge it, Ness is titanic the shit out of <gasps> this. That's right. Oh, I love it. It's my favourite. But, like, oh. that, but that, that's such a clear, like Jesus mm. does not stutter misrepresenting the mission of God mm. and the word of God. Mm. Mm. Like, do not go there. Mm. Yeah. Or hurting one of his kids. It, exactly. Use, we, we were talking about it last night in the context of he's speaking knowing full well that the religious leaders are listening in trying to catch him out on something. Yeah. He's basically like laying down mm-hmm. people in positions of spiritual authority, spiritual yep. leadership, whether it's for mm. them now to us today in the church, mm take that very seriously, mm. yeah. intentionally misrepresenting that, yeah. whether it's for your own yeah. whatever or f- for whatever reason. Or even your own fears, anxieties and concerns exactly. about, do I trust this? Yeah. Mm. yeah, That's a big deal. Yeah. Can I throw a, an extra one into this? <coughs> the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit at work in people's lives is not the sole domain of the church. Mm. I, I think... Reach. P- parts of us get caught up in the idea that God's ours. And if you want to join the, the, the Jesus movement, you've got to come to our building and sit in the yeah. thing and then and God will meet you and that's how you get to know Jesus and everything gets to be great. And then eventually God might speak to you and slap you on the back and put a firecracker up your butt. <laughs> when in reality, again, without being that guy, there's a whole bunch of biblical examples mm. of God meeting people mm. through the Holy Spirit who don't come to church, no. that aren't a part of the Jesus movement. Like Paul is the perfect example, yeah. right? Paul was persecuting the church. Paul loved God, mm. didn't love Jesus, nope. didn't think Jesus was the guy that Jesus is. Hey, his guts, mate. Mate, he was doing his... Mate, we've got... The, our introduction to Saul is he was overseeing the stoning of Stephen. And Great killing, work. And wanting yeah. to kill the Christians. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely quality, bring quality him down. dude. So in that, God as spirit meets Paul. Yeah. Firecracker moment. Bingo. Shit had to stop. And there are multiple instances since that aren't in scripture that there are some, but but also that stretch through Christian mm. history. We'll say Christian history because it's those moments that so radically transform or prompt a radical transformation mm. in people's lives that they go, this is what it now means for me. I was persecuting the church or I was engaging yeah. in this stuff. Or, and, and like... Praise God legitimately that that stuff happens because mm. God's church is not doing that enough mm. and engaging in the world that encourages people to see God at work in their lives mm. Mm. already. Like we don't turn up mm. 
Mm. and go, so we're bringing Jesus. Mm. We'd like you to meet him. Mm. God is thankfully already there, and we are simply connecting into and participating in that mission Mm. and wanting to see how the Spirit is at work and hear it and feel it and acknowledge it so that we can be in tune, Mm. so that we can line up with that. I, I... Maybe it's the 1980s theology because that's when I was a teenager growing up. This notion that, and I know it's way before that, but still even then the notion that that not we bring Jesus but we're there to tell people about how God functions instead of acknowledging, hey, God is God loves you. Mm. God is at work in the world well before, you know, little old Malk turned up and said, oh, by the way, Jesus loves you. Mm. It helps that I do that. Mm. And Again, it's taken me many years to work out that my actual job as a person who loves Jesus is to help other people mm. recognize how God is at work in their lives. Mm. Yeah. It's not to, to say I bring anything special. It's not to say, I mean, God empowers all of us in different ways. Legitimately, that recognition that God is at work in all of our lives, the mm. Spirit empowers us, advocates for us, yeah. challenges Thank us. You, convicts us. And there's mm. something that we don't talk too greatly about yeah. in your own church either. Mm. It's the nature of conviction and sin. And mm. Mm. Anyway, um, mm. we got seven podcasts back up know. just out of this. <laughs> we'll line them up. <laughs> but so, so, so when we acknowledge, and I think this is the, the catch for me, when we talk about the mission of God and how we want to participate in it, we have to be actively looking for how God is at work. For us mm. to be looking for God at work, we have to be open to the movement of the Spirit yep. because that is God at work. Yep. And that will surprise us. Yep. And that will challenge us to our core. Mm-hmm. That will put mm-hmm. a firecracker up our bat. That will mm-hmm. strangely warm us. And mm-hmm. so we're adults having this conversation. Mm. What about Allegedly. the kids? Here's, yeah, well, <laughs> you pretend to be a grown-up. <laughs> I'm nearly 50 and I never call myself a grown-up. Yeah. And once. I never want to be yeah, a grown-up. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I need to tell you about Slink. Sure. Mm. Back to Slink. She's about eight years old. She's grown. I'm her mum, so she'd have a bias to hearing me talk about the Holy Spirit and Jesus, how yep. I talk about Jesus. So it's just a part of our vernacular in the home yep. and nothing unusual here. It's just free to have a full-on Jesus conversation and that's how she knows. So I need to put that on the table, yep. right? My girlfriend had rung from Canberra saying, Ness, I'm coming up to Queensland. Mum doesn't – they don't think mum's going to live uh, for the next couple uh, – she's got a couple of days to live. Can I come and stay with you? Sure. Yeah, babe, come on, Melinda, come and stay. Absolutely. Um, stay as long as you need. Um, yeah, we don't know when, but, um, yeah, it'd be great if I can just come up and hang. Yeah. Babe, come on up. So she comes up yeah. on a Sunday night. Slink loves Melinda. Um, Melinda comes over. We have dinner. We, you know, care for Melinda. Um, Melinda goes, drops the stuff and then goes off to be with her mum. Mm. She comes back and Slink's tucked into bed at that stage and we talk. Melinda says, yeah, it'll be a couple of days, a couple of days, we reckon. We're not... 100% sure, but the nursing home will let us know she's on palliative care. It's towards the end. I said, oh, Mel, that's tough. Anyway, Slink, the next morning, says to me, Mum, can you come here? I said, yeah, mate, is everything all right? Um, you having trouble having a poo? What's going on? Mm. And she says, no, Mum, God spoke to me last night. And I go, yeah, what did, what did God have to say, babe? She said that Melinda's mum's going to die on Wednesday. Wow. And I go, I go, babe, wow. And she said, he wants you to know. Wow. I said, Slink, thanks, mate. That's wonderful. She said, um, you okay, mum? I said, it's really, really great that I know that. Mm. And I'm really grateful that you listen to God and that God trusted you with that information mm, and you yeah. were able to tell me that. Mm. Because it's really helpful, honey. Thank you. Anyway, I don't say anything to Melinda. Yeah. But I tell Rob, my husband, Mm -hmm. and Slink goes off to school the next day and I say to Melinda, Melinda, can I come to be with your mum? Do you want me to pray over your mum? Sure, Ness, that'd be great. And go and I have an opportunity to pray over her mum and I come home and Melinda stays there. And I know that I'm going to need to cook, cook a baked dinner. Yep. Because I know that the mum's going to die on the Wednesday mm-hmm. and Melinda's going to need a baked dinner. Yep. So I, and I'm a busy working woman. I yep. go out, I buy all the things that we need and I, I know this sounds basic, but <laughs> so 
like God's prompting me with what I needed to do mm. in the moment in preparation. Yep. Melinda's mum died on the Wednesday morning. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. And when Slink found out, she said, yeah, I know. I know, mum. God said. Wow. Like, no shock to Slink. Mm. No, of course, mum. It's God as if just saying, yeah, well, like, fuck, are you dumb? <laughs> it, like that. Do you know? Do you know? And if she, if mm. a kid could say adult language like yeah, that, yeah. it was like that. Well, like it was right there. I told you. So God speaks to kids as well. Absolutely. And it would be it would be the 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 grandest of you know sort of egotistical responses to think that God didn't. Right. Yeah, that's right. right. Well, many many movements won't baptize their kids until mm. they've done the six week course, right? Yeah. Or, can, or profess themselves, right? To stand right. up and, and speak their mm. their journey and be able mm. to say, and "This is when I gave mm. my life to Jesus." And well, because and as a child, they don't think they've had a journey yet. Mm. So, how can you profess a journey if you if you're not fifteen? Oh, mm. this this fires me up. I, a amazing. <laughs> well done, up. Slink. Yeah. Phenomenal yeah, work. Good well up. done, God. Well, yes, yeah. you know. I mean, that's a standing order. Big ups to God. Great work. <laughs> Clicks to God. Can you do a clap? A click clap? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like all the sure. bits. Mark. It's a something. Yeah. <laughs> full full credit to Slink for being again acknowledge the context. It's a conversation we have in a house. She was comfortable with it to be able to say. To be able to say, hey, mum, I you know I need to tell you this. This is what I understand God is saying to me. That that is a uh, an environment yeah. is a really positive one for anybody, not just your eight year old daughter. Mm. Anybody mm. to know that whether we talk about it in our household, we talk mm. about it in our small group, we talk mm. about it in our church congregations. Yeah, if God is talking to you, don't like, don't be like Eli. Mm. Just tell Samuel to say, what do you got to say to me, God? Mm. Tell me what it is. Amen. Because God will speak. And we have yep. all those great examples Amen. of God speaking through little yep. people. Jesus reminds yep. us that to have a faith like a child is going to be how we need to engage in this. Yep. Because they, A, have no filter or less of a filter. Mm. The world hasn't pushed down on them yet. Yep. They're willing to just go, okay, so this is a thing. Mm-hmm. I, God said this to me and so I'm going to t- mm. say that to you. Mm. Um, and we should encourage that that innocent developmental mm. nature of our relationship with God because that takes away the hardened cynicism and the mm. skepticism and mm. all of the stuff mm. that makes us go, well, yeah. I mean, Ness is a great person and it's wonderful that she feels called to <laughs> minister in the name of God, but this whole Jesus girl stuff needs to dry up. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's how I was encouraged for it to dry up. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't going to go anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Good combo. Yeah. Solid. I, mm. Incredible. I, I just, I guess, want to finish up by just encouraging any listeners or people yeah, who are watching, great. like, have more conversations about this stuff. Um, yeah. Feel free to hit us up as well. Shoot us an email. you got our email, filthyhopepod at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you if you've got things you want to share. I, um, I'd love the sharing thing. But also this, Jonty and Malk, if you're out there and you're listening and you think it's all BS mm. – and why don't you just talk to God about it? Just yeah. have, in mm. your private time. Yeah. No one's going to watch you, judge you, or know that it's going on. <laughs> yep. Only God. And if you don't think God exists, just give it a smash it out anyway. Give, give it a shot. shot. Yeah, give it a big one. Yeah, and ask God to maybe meet you where you're at. Yes. Yeah. And to to speak to you if, if audible speak is what God wants for you. Or is it in visions, mm. like many people in the Bible? Is it in signs and wonders? Again, many stories about that in the Bible. God will meet you where you are needing to be met. Yep. And I think that's the big message. Yep. We're not all the same. Yeah. Mm. Do you know what I mean? We mm-hmm. just be listening and opening to the to the magnificence of how God has designed you yes. to tune to him. But I suppose the big thing, just tune in. Yeah. Preach. Yeah. Absolutely. Or not. <laughs> Sucked in if you don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, thank you. This has been incredible. Thank you. Um, guys. Oh, Malk. You, uh, Pulsecast has just oh, launched. What, I, a, what an amazing transition into talking about a competing podcast. Yeah, well, you? You, you got two minutes and then I'll cut you off. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> what, what's going on with Pulsecast? Because, so uh, the Pulse team are trying to develop a, a resource for the life of the Uniting Church that talks about all of the stuff that we are absolutely passionate about, which is engaging ministry with and engaging ministry for young people. At all of the levels. So little people, high schooler ages, and the older young adult people. 
Uh, we're at time of recording three episodes in. We'll have our youth ministry focused podcast. So, but like, and it's just a one hundred and one. What is youth ministry? Why do we do it? We've had a young adult ministry one. We've had a conversation about our kids camp out ministry and a basic introduction to who the Pulse team is, in case people didn't know who we are. That's where we land. Um, there's some big ideas and some big stuff. The, the, it's absolutely for people who work in ministry with young people or want to be in ministry with young people um, that aren't afraid to hear us talk about ideas where we need to think bigger than ourselves and outside what serves us. What does it look mm. for? Look like for us to be engaged with a group of people that are, look, proportionally not huge within the life of our movement and have often felt marginalised mm. or called to do all of the stuff that everyone else feels too tired to do. Mm. Yeah. So that, that in itself opens up some big conversations and struggles. We love it. We're just trying it out for the first season. We'll see how it goes. Congratulations. Oh, mate, it's it's something that we're – I'm certainly something that I'm enjoying doing because it's this Wonderful. long part of my history. Mm. Uh, and it's amazing to hear just some of the stories come up and come out of our guests and members of the Pulse team as they Wonderful. open up in the same way that we've talked today. Yeah, yeah. and shout out to this beautiful studio. Yes, because we're coming, Filthy Hope, coming live from your studio, uh, yes. Malk, which is just beautifully equipped. Thank you, Synod. It's just incredible. <laughs> with, yeah, the ca- cameras, you've got all the fancy palaver in this space. So thank you for your gracious hospitality today. It's been beautiful. Look, it's our pleasure. And if only we had more power, because I think all of the cameras have turned yeah, off. I, I did notice that. <laughs> oh, son of a motherless. <laughs> but I tell you what we'll do. Um, just we'll, a still image for the last half yeah, of the yeah, podcast. Yeah. <laughs> what we'll do in our... Um, podcast is Jonty can put it into our show notes how to access your oh podcast. yeah of course yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. for yeah. sure absolutely I'll be down there yes. super cross promo hashtag number one um, youth ministry podcast in the United Church that's right oh it's so good <laughs> so good I'm never going to remember that <laughs> cool let's wrap it up there well, thanks for joining us thank we'll, you we'll have you back for it, the three Pete at some point I'm sure oh the audience um, will love that absolutely Ness thanks for joining me as always thank you Jonty this is Filthy Hope I'm Jonty I'm Ness Malk See you next time. Word to your mother. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. Bye. <laughs> Bye. This is a prayer for the people who want to give up. Who have been hurt beyond repair and cannot bear to see your face in anything. Find peace in letting go of the guilt that is in yours. Thank you.